What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Eddie Life Podcast, episode number 228. And I have my longtime good friend and VIP customer, Mr. John Eastwood. How you doing, brother? Oh, doing well, doing well. So glad to be here. Thanks for, for, for agreeing to come out and, and sharing some stories, man. Appreciate it. Oh, it's a great pleasure. You know, like uh, me and my family, uh, my kids, we've uh, spent the last, uh, like, you know, at least 15 years uh, coming to your place. <laughs> so it's, um, it's, it's wonderful to come in this context as well. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, we were just talking about the fact that uh, we saw the, I saw the kids grow up from about age, age one ish, one or two. And yeah, I, I, now when I see them, it's kind of like I remember them as little kids and now they're not <laughs> i know i know one of them's right over there i mean he's like you know he's like 15 times 20 times the size he was when he first started coming exactly yes for sure for sure <laughs> and then you, you know sometimes i see them out and i have to do like the double take because i'm just like oh, you know you see you see kids grow up and you know they come in with their families and stuff and you know you see them as little kids and then they get to maybe like teenagers and stuff like that and then they're coming in with their friends and then sometimes they, you know they get to like the late teens and then they're coming in with dates and stuff so you get to see like the whole kind of it's process a it's a little it's a little crazy it's a little crazy but it's good it's good we're still young though so yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're still young we're still young yeah man so i mean i know i know you've been a lawyer for quite a quite a long time in taiwan right you've been here for how long? 23 years in Taiwan. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I never thought I was going to be here that long. I mean, my first time coming to Taiwan was yep. moving here. So it's okay. not like I'd had some past experience of like, you know, um, traveling here a bunch of times before or coming here for business or coming here for fun. I, I arrived off the plane and went to work within a couple of days. Wonderful. Okay. So you came here for work directly. Yeah. Right yeah. In the beginning. Okay. Yeah. And, and that was, so that was in 2000. Um, I, at that stage, I'd been a lawyer, uh, I graduated from law school in 96, um, took the uh, took the bar exam back then, uh, got sworn in in 97 and worked wow. uh, in the U.S. Um, and then when I came out to Taiwan, you know, it, it was because I really wanted to get back out to Asia. Okay, okay. You know, I felt it was like a place where things happen. Um, gotcha. And I didn't know if I would quite have the patience to run around the dusty factories like some of the really brave folks out there. Understand. So I thought of like the you know the the 49ers the uh okay um, you know like you know, like the the in the gold rush you know it's, yes it's like you know who made the money it was i i guess it was like you know uh, levi strauss yes okay or, yeah. or probably the people that that sell uh pickaxes uh you know to the gold prospectors back Understand. there and yes you know the people selling the whiskey and the and the pickaxes and and you know and the jeans yes for sure that's hilarious yes no that's that's a good one man so 23 years beautiful so Doing some, doing the law, uh, being a lawyer in the states, and then also being a lawyer in Taiwan as well. Very different, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I think it. You know, I don't know if I would have made like more money or if I would have done better in the United States. It's impossible to like you know go back and know. But cheers, the one brother. thing you, cheers, man. Thank you. Uh, the th one thing you can know, I think, at least I think, very firmly, uh, is that. You know, I had a. I think I had a more interesting life and career by coming out to a different place and making a living and dealing with some of the the strange problems that I <laughs> wanted to see. I agree. Uh, yeah. I, I when I go back, I come from a really small town, and it's great. I love to go back to visit. And, and but yeah, when I go back and I meet, you know, I'm hanging out with my high school buddies. It's kind of like it's almost like a time machine, you know, going back and being like it's just like everybody's just kind of heckling each other, just total high school mode. But you know, we're in our forties now, and it it's fun to go back and do that. But definitely, uh, would have been a different life if I if I hadn't come out. Yeah. Well, it, it's you know, it's fun because I appreciate. I mean, I didn't yeah. leave the United States exactly. because I hate the United States. Oh, no, no, I mean, You yeah. didn't leave Canada because you, you hate no, Canada. No, for sure not, no. It, what it is is like you, you actually appreciate certain things of your hometown and your home country more. Yeah. Um, so you get back with family, you get back with friends, and you're like, oh, my God, yeah. Like, you know, joking in the English language is something you take for granted. You know, For sure, yeah. And like that kind of give and take and stuff like that. Although my kids are quite good and my wife is has a good sense of humor. So it's that's it's good. really fun to like, you know, to talk with them, that's joke beautiful. with them. And, you know, I think that's 90% you know, of adversity in life goes away if you have a sense of humor. I think so. I think uh, I think also I have that with my daughter as well. We kind of I think we kind of rub off on her and, and yeah, and it's it's good. It's good because I, I enjoy that. I, that's stuff that I miss for sure. 
But uh, you were mentioning, you know, kind of weird and craziness, crazy cases and stuff that you uh, you had to deal with out here. If someone were to ask you, okay, pick one kind of like a crazy case that you've had to deal with over the last 20 years, what would be one that would pop to your mind? There was there was there was one that we did. Um, and this this was um, so there was also some, like, you know, taboos and things like that associated sure. with it. Sure. Um, so we have a client now, you know, and and I love I love um Kerpervelt and the uh, you know, Body Worlds exhibition. Yeah, I went to see it before they were a client. I went um, to Germany. My first ever trip to Germany. Really? I was in uh, Cologne, and I saw his exhibition. And I brought back his exhibition materials. He has these plastinated human bodies. Yeah, um, and he profoundly, profoundly cares about educating the public about anatomy and how the human body works. And, you know, although his displays are very fanciful and very like, you know, often very edgy, he's trying to teach you something about like, you know, this is how the human nervous system works. This is how the, the skeleton matches in with the bones. This is how the muscles work. How this is how the layers of muscles are. And I showed the materials to my brother, who's a doctor uh, and a medical professor at Duke. And, you know, he was amazed. He was like, whoa, this guy is really taking things to another level. Well, yeah. when the chance came up to work with him and my colleagues were actually, I had already started working with um, Body Worlds on their on their exhibitions in Taiwan, yep. on the corporate and the, you know, kind of the tax and, you know, corporate uh, company side of it, the commercial side of it. Um, but then the IP issue came up that there was a competing show that had exactly copied. <laughs> okay. And they had done this into like now, Von, Dr. Von Hagens, like, is so careful about the ethics and professionalism and making sure there's like informed consent sure. and making sure, and like they've had like, people doing studies of of his you know all the paperwork they've reviewed every bit of of the donor forms and matched them up and looked at things and in his process for doing things and he's so careful to adhere to the toughest possible european laws sure and especially germany after world war ii tough it's like, laws yeah yes like yeah. everything about medical ethics because of what had happened under the nazis gotcha so in the post-war world this guy was just incredible and there was this competing show which had just like, yeah, they're like, they're, the corpses that they were using had just like, uh, the rules in China were a lot oh, no. looser. <laughs> so if you had an unclaimed body for three days, oh, they were like scraping that up off the pavement and like, and posing it and sticking it in plastic and the plastic, oh. the plastination, the, the polymers they were using were so bad that the, that the, 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 the exhibits they had were dripping. Oh, and That's you know, they hadn't posed them first before they plastinated them. So they'd like oh. actually just hacked away the muscle fibers and then just stuck wire in or something to kind of Ooh. approximate the poses. And it was just like, oh, these guys really didn't give a damn. I mean, oh, that's oh. That's awful, man. Oh, my I, God. I mean, so they, yeah. Wow. Know, in China, yeah. Yeah. like in those days, in the early 2000s, yeah. can you imagine you go? You're, you're like fresh into the big city, like so many of the people who go in, you're from like, you know, a far off province, you've come in from the countryside, mm -hmm. and on day two, you get hit by a bus. And then after somebody riffles through your pockets, you know, and like takes all your cash or something like that, maybe, maybe the police might call up your hometown. In those days, in mainland China, if you were really from the sticks, there might be like a landline in your town. Okay, okay. And that would be at the police station. If And if somebody picked up, and if they got to your family, and if your family members could get to Beijing. Within three days. Within three days well, to claim your body. But, you know, like, and you could see they'd gone to no effort. Oof. It really didn't give a crap. And so, like, so our case, we, we, we raised it on copyright. The idea that, like, they they had copied, essentially, these artistic and scientific educational works okay made by you know von, uh, von hagen a straight ripoff basically a straight ripoff yeah. yeah and uh so oh god the the it was not easy but we managed to get um the prosecutors to to detain you know essentially to you know close up and seal off um 
you know, uh, it, it, there's a lot of taboos about dead things here. I mean, like, you know, anything about Ghost ashes, months and yeah, yes. all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. There are a lot of things that are very treated as like bad mojo and stuff yeah. like that. So um, that was a fascinating because all the 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 difficulties of finding um, you know, working with investigators, working with police units, um, you know, trying to like make the case to the court, trying to make the case. Um, and in, in some ways it wasn't successful and in other ways it was, I think okay. it disrupted the copycat show. Um, and I think it, it, it took away a lot of its value because, you know, where are they going to take it next? Mm -hmm. Um, but it ultimately we didn't prevail. And I, I oh, and, really, Oh, that's, that's sad to hear. Shoot. Okay. You know, you know, I think it was decided legally wrong, but I think it was also, I could see that culturally it was a really hard case to bring. Um, but I, I don't think we've seen in Taiwan a copycat exhibition of that kind ever again. And uh, Van, Van Huggins' uh, Body Worlds uh, show has come back to Taiwan. Okay, I remember it. I remember it about 20 years ago. Yeah, when uh, when I first came here, I, I do remember it coming. Uh, I wanted to go check it out. I didn't have a chance to, but a friend of mine went and brought me back a book, like this big, thick Body Worlds book. So when you mentioned that, I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's the same one. And then... When I kind of dove deep into it, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but I did not know about uh, the the China uh, sort of knockoff version, which is sad to hear and, and uh, unfortunately it's unsurprising. Sometimes you know it's sad, but and then not prevailing, which is that's that's even worse. I think, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes you don't win a case, but in in the end, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know that you you know you didn't win but they didn't really win either okay you know so there was a little satisfaction on that side but there wasn't we didn't get any kind of massive damages and we didn't you know um but on the other hand i mean like you know when i compare between it and, and you know it, it's it's amazing when you know when i go to to germany for example yeah if i go out to berlin which is where they have their plastinarium um uh they have a permanent I exhibition in okay. uh in berlin okay um but you know they'll get me free passes and stuff like that and okay you know and there's a lot of um you know i really love those uh you know uh you know van hagens and uh dr angelina wally uh his wife is a um uh is also a very conscientious uh anatomist okay and they 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 just are so i mean it's quirky and people think of them as you know it's a little crazy but what they also do is really beautiful because the human body is so delicate and so amazing and they really are trying to teach people they're like they're like evangelicals they got that enthusiasm okay. for gotcha. they want people to know science and i and i have to say i'm 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 all the better for having i'm better for having worked for them as a client that's beautiful man wow that that uh that story is like i was saying it's a it's a little yeah well luckily you guys were able to influence and and sort of uh put a stop you know, somewhat of a stop to the, the copycats. Cause that's uh yeah, that's a little crazy. And for them to use, yeah, normal, uh, real human bodies that, you know, were donated and stuff. I mean, that's definitely gotta be a process as opposed to, you know, three days. All right. What's it's a free for all. That's crazy. Wow. If you do that, you know, if yeah. you volunteer to be yeah. one of the donors for the real body worlds exhibit, um, one thing is this is they actually have parties and get togethers for all the other donors. Okay. I mean, they're actually, the donors are really enthusiastic about it because everybody would like to be actually, if, you, if you've ever seen it, I mean, like, you know, they're like, you know, throwing the football, you know, hucking a, a javelin. They're like, you know, they're you, a lot of times. And as part of the process, they remove all the fat. So you look great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the best diet in town. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're immortalized you know. and you're ripped, basically. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look fabulous when you're okay. up there. So, so like, you know, I, there's a lot of folks that, that, um, they have specifically put it in their in their bequest um, okay. that when they pass, this is what to do. You know, make sure I get right over to uh, the Plastination Center. Make sure that uh, I'm put in the hands of uh, you know Dr. Von Hagen's. And, okay. Uh, you know, okay. And it's it's great. I mean, it's like nice. It's kind. Of, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you know you could you could be buried under a stone or you could be yeah. cremated or you know you could be put on an exhibition that's not the worst way it sounds like you know that sounds pretty that sounds like a pretty good deal honestly kind yeah. of immortality yeah you're immortal right it's yeah that's that's <laughs> not bad at all but i, I like mean I, yeah. I don't know if you if you kind of screw up though i mean if you get like i don't know like really pulverized by a car you might end up they might not get all of you so you might not be the heroic figure you could be uh, just like the smoker's lung or you know okay yeah you know, yeah 
the guy but with... still, I mean, if it's helping, I think it's not, you know, the whole donation thing is, I think it's okay because I know some people are against it, but if you're, you know, if you can, if you can use, you know, your body to help, to help out other people. And I think it's, I think it's great. Well, my dad, my dad, uh, when he passed on, he, he donated his body uh, to a, a medical school okay. uh, for use by the anatomy students. Cause he, you know, you, I mean, the 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 doctors who are in uh, medical school they gotta they've gotta learn gross anatomy somehow yeah yeah and it, it shouldn't only be just you know like people Animals who are desperate and, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know whatever I mean like uh, you know and, and the health I mean there's a lot of homeless people that do it in order to get like money for you know so if you if you're uh, if you're actually like a relatively healthy but elderly gentleman I mean or lady I mean why not yeah why not I, if it's gonna contribute somewhat it seems like to society right and i mean people can get uh you can learn i mean imagine they used your body and they were able to you know, cure cancer or something because of something you had that'd be that'd be pretty amazing i think you know yeah, yeah. like that would be would be cool well yeah. i mean in the really old days like you know yeah. medical students used to like you know they they'd go to the grave robbers and stuff like that they shouldn't be like that yeah I mean, it shouldn't no. be well <laughs> three days right <laughs> three days that's rough that's rough uh, that's, that's beautiful. Wow. That's kind of a, that's a crazy one. But, uh, so obviously, uh, we have a restaurant here and for business, for people that are not business owners, it's, uh, they don't know that it's notoriously hard to fire people in Taiwan. Right. Oh, yeah. So for you, uh, has there been any sort of cases where, you know, any executives, high level executives or something like that have been to, you know, it's tough to, it's tough to fire for a big corporation. Right. Yeah. Have well, have there been anything like that uh, come yeah, across here? It's not like the United States. So okay. the United States is the at-will, you know, employment doctrine. And in sure. Taiwan, um, you know, the, you have to have a reason. Okay. You know, it can't be just for, like, any reason. Like, sure. I don't like, you know, the, you know, you gave me the side eye. I don't like his that. new haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, the great thing about, like, the great thing about Taiwan, um, you know, for example, like, um, okay, Sometimes, sometimes we we found it's like you know, a client would have a concern about like a senior manager. Okay, and we had this case a while back. It was a guy in the agrochem uh, field. He was the country manager. He was a bit of a like a legend. He was like really gotcha. you know quite well known to everybody in the industry. And he gets, um, he he decided that it would be a great idea to hire as his personal secretary. Um, a KTV, like one of those businessmen KTV hookers, you know, like to, to work for him. Never been to one of those, like, so. No, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. neither me, but, yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. but like, there, there's like a classic weird bit of, and I think it's getting phased out, but, you know, it was this classic bit of, of Taiwan business entertainment. Oh, I understand a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. So it's like, you know, almost like that old James Bond movie where they're like, you know, um, yeah, like when he goes to the Orient and they're all like, you know, ooh, you know. <laughs> um, men come first in the in the Orient. Ew, you know, like uh, so, like this understandable. was understandable. Yeah, yeah. This was like, you know, it was creepy stuff. Um, sure, sure, of course. And he had this like lady who's absolutely like not qualified working as as his personal assistant. Now. But he liked her. <laughs> yes, and he was a, he was like basically firing anyone who he suspected of. Oh no, you know, not approving of like this utterly unqualified person and, uh, oh, and wow okay. and it was also compounded by the fact that every day at like 3 p.m he was going to a motel with her so that's why he liked her so much yeah the perks there <laughs> so, <laughs> that's crazy you know there was there was a lot of things like to juggle here there was like i uh, you know he's kind of misusing his his like position and he's like kind of like forcing all these like qualified good employees out for no good reason sure and he's like he's so he's wrecking people he's wrecking people's careers he's so, like, so this ktv host is, is is climbing up the ladder very quick bumping off more qualified people apparently it, that's what it sounds like yeah it, 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 okay. he has this like this thing where he was like he wasn't in the office when he was supposed to be in the office mm -hmm. and and he was taking the company car to drive her to the motel and so they were trying to think through different things it's like well could we fire him for um you know, it's the company car. It's supposed to be used for company business. This is a company business. He's just having sex with someone. Yeah. And like, he's supposed to be in the office during normal working hours, but he's not. Can we fire him for that? And yeah, he was supposed to. And like, it ended up that when we took a hard look at it, you know, because there was a lot of things that were really messy here. I can imagine. Yeah. So we finally looked at it and we we're just like, you know what it is? Um, uh, he's been awarding himself 
overtime, which as the top level country manager guy, you don't get overtime. Yeah. Like everyone okay. else gets overtime. Sure, sure, sure. But not the the top country manager. You you're actually one of the people that's exempt from that. And okay. Like I don't get overtime. Do you get overtime? Uh, no, no overtime for me, my friend. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we're like you know too close to being a boss. You yeah, know? yeah. Nope. Yeah. So you know he was. So that's what his. Yeah, and he. Um, the other problem he had was is that you know he was like uh, he was giving himself all these bonuses, but he would mm. slyly give be like, okay, um, you've all done an exe exemplary um, job, uh, so I'm awarding. 50,000 NT in bonuses to all of us. <laughs> okay, okay. And it's like, wait. Oh, that's, okay. And, you know, just because you try to spread it around doesn't mean you didn't take something yourself and yeah. you shouldn't have taken it. So it was over financial issues. Okay. And it was actually okay. fairly small when you consider that this guy, if he had held on to his job for even just like six months more, yeah. he would have been eligible for a retirement benefit of like 2 million US. Oh, okay. Wow. But he was a he was he was such a dope because he just like he threw it all i mean like if he wanted to have an affair which i guess <laughs> he yeah. was doing yeah of course if, yeah. but if he if he was going to do that then like don't take the company car <laughs> yeah don't don't take it into the office and don't do it into this like turn it into this whole thing and you know it was it, it was just too like in everyone's faces yeah yeah um so you know, it's that, almost like like flaunting it, right? Kind of like people knew he knew that everybody knew, but he still did it. Yeah, it was so bad that like you know, company management flew in from Singapore, and there was a typhoon going on on the day that he was being fired. It was like a typhoon day; nobody could go anywhere, and like still, we all had to go down to the place to fire him. Really? Like, and so he gets called in, and we had to go to like um, you know Sheraton. Uh, I think it was like they got a meeting room over there at the hotel with the, okay. these guys. Uh, <laughs> The guys who flew in from Singapore, like, you know, held the meeting at the hotel they were staying at because they didn't want to go. Yeah, anywhere. exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So so we all went down there and I basically like hopped out of the um, uh, the uh, MRT station that's right outside of the Sheraton. Uh -huh. And immediately, like, you know, I got soaking. I just like head to foot soaked, no. like just on that like 10, 10 yard walk into the hotel. OK, but I got in there and we were like we had we were on call. Me and the other lawyer were okay. on call just in case there was a problem. There wasn't one. Um, and corporate security ended up taking the guy back to the office and his desk, when clearing out his desk Ooh. on this typhoon day, and it was just like, it was like, like no. a, the guy had a million condoms oh, and like just gonna sex say toys and all oh. this other, and it was just like so like oh like you just really lost sight of life, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. I think that that whole. Uh, what do you call them? Business KTV. I think it's phasing out slowly. I think I'm not sure. I mean, but I know that uh, I know a lot of people here that actually go to those and, and it's they're kind of crazy. They're well, kind of crazy. One of the yeah. really, you know, and this guy was never one of my clients or anything like that, but yeah. like, uh, you know, um, for the, for this issue, but the, one of the most famous expat screw ups involved a, a businessman KTV was uh, the case of Zane Dean. Okay. Okay. No, tell me about that. Yeah. So that's the guy that like he escaped on his friend's passport, um, but he had been convicted of a drunk driving incident. Oh, okay. Okay. And he killed someone, or Ooh. he was he was convicted of having killed a person. But the whole issue of like uh, how legit was this is is a slightly different thing. Okay. So, um, here's like a really strong life lesson. He w apparently went to a businessman's KTV. You know, drank up a storm, got uh -huh. wailing drunk, oh. and then immediately, like, oh. taxi cabs are totally available in this town. Yeah, you know, of course. They're, they're everywhere. They're every, and even now with Ubers, it's even easier, right? Like, you don't even have to call anybody. You just tap, 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 and you're good, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. you don't have to try to tell someone your address in Chinese. Yeah, exactly. Okay. If you don't. Like we had to do back in the day, you know, with a, with a business card and be like, take me here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, oh, yeah. Like, uh, wait a minute. And, they, they're, you know, the old days, there wasn't like, um, so you, you really had to learn your characters or you had to learn, like, the pronunciations of different things. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, yeah. um, and cab drivers would screw up too i mean like honestly like I, you know if i'd go out to minsheng uh donglu and i'd be really careful i'd be like you know sheng ru to sheng you know yeah yeah and then they'd be like hey, they took you to min chuen ru uh min chuen ru. Uh, I've, had, like, I've been i've been there i've been there yeah you know that's um, funny cab driver gets mistaken it, it starts to say something like oh you know 
like uh, you tell them, I want to go to the corner of, you know, Nanjing and uh, Fuxing, Fuxing and Nanjing. Yeah. 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 Fuxing, Nanjing to Chachaco. I want to yeah. go to that corner. I want to go to that intersection. Yeah. And they're like, oh, what section? Yeah. Like, it no, doesn't it... matter what section. Those two roads only intersect at yeah, one place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I also, I remember, yeah. One of the first month, I think it was the first month I was here. Uh, one of the things that that's very different about Taiwan, uh, I, I took a taxi, I was taking it, you know, downtown or something. And the taxi driver who spoke some English, which was, you know, which was pretty rare at the time. Uh, he said, Oh, yeah. first they say American, you know, make war and and I'm like, no, nah. and I would say, no, you know, I'm not, I'm Canadian. And first of all, they would be disappointed. That's what I tell people when I misbehave. They're mostly, mis they're mostly disappointed <laughs> when they hear Canadian. They're like, Oh, now it's a little bit different, but at the time they'd be like, Oh, uh, and then he would say, okay, where are you from? Uh, how long have you been in Taiwan? And then question number three is one month, how much money you make? Oh God. Yeah. It's like a free <laughs> Chinese lesson. I and mean, I was like, Oh, like if you can answer the next question, it's like bing, bing, bing achievement unlocked, you know? Yeah. And at that time, just being here for like a month, I don't think anyone has ever asked me aside from family, you know, how much money you make a month, you know? So just, a random taxi driver is like, how much money do you make in a month? You're teaching English. What's your salary? And I'm just like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was kind of like thinking, what should I say? What should I say? What should I say? And I, so I told him. Yeah, and he's kind of like, oh, pretty good. Pretty good money. Good money. I'm like, I, no, I, so I flew across the world for it. <laughs> they were they were so nice. In the first like oh, for sure. two months yeah. when I first got to Taiwan, as long as my answer was like, I've been here for like, you know, two months, three months. Yeah. yeah. They're like, they were offering to take me for tea, you know, offer yeah. you a great place for this, you yeah. know, we could be friends, you know. And then like, you know, once you've been here for a few years, they kind of don't care, but they might get every so often I get the really curious cab drivers. Yeah, sure. But, you know, thinking back to the Zane Dean thing is like, yeah, I think the classic problem is that like, you know, of course, there's services where you can have someone drive your car, but like cabs are so cheap that like the whole thing of putting he put his life in the hands of an employee from, I guess, the gangster run oh. ATV. Oh, so gotcha. that's the problem is like he gets in the cab. Uh, you know, he he could have got in a cab instead. He got in his own car, and that's crazy. Like apparently, all the camera footage disappeared, so that nobody knows where it was. That at some point he did end up driving the car. Oof. Um, but no one knows whether it was like before or after the accident. Okay. And that's a real problem because it's yeah. like you know if your alibi relies upon like a gangster run operations employee. Yeah. Essentially, like a really low level gangster. Yeah. Some guy with like, you know, that kind of, you know, badly, um, you know, kind of brown dyed hair with like tons of betel nut in their oh, teeth and stuff. That's not. Yeah. You don't want uh, to be <laughs> have your alibi based on that. Guy. Like, yeah. I, I want this guy to own up that he was the one that was in the accident. That's like that's bad mojo. That doesn't really work. Yeah, no, for sure. For so, sure. like, okay. you know, you never want to put yourself in the mercy of people who can absolutely screw you over. Um, I mean, it's a nodal point for trouble. Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, going into a place like that is always is is always, you know, it's, it's not going to end well. Uh, and, and yeah, definitely drinking and driving anywhere is 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 never good. But here, I believe, yeah, taxis are really cheap. Everything's really, especially compared to back home. It's one of it's the crazy. safest places. And it's so it? safe, right? And it's not that big. I mean, I I've walked like an hour home, you know, drunk before, and I just kind of walk home and. You're a little sore the next day because, you know, who knows how you were walking, but you're just like, you know, you make it home and you're good. Did you ever but own driving, a, uh, like no. a scooter or? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I definitely. I always wanted to. You know, that's the thing. I have a big regret. But like I when I first got out here, I when I before I came out here, I heard that this place was the king of like the, the world's greatest place for having um, a scooter. It was like sure. everyone had scooters. And I, I thought it was going to be like it was going to be like Roman holiday. Okay. Like okay. I'd be there with a fedora, like driving along and have Beautiful. Audrey Hepburn on the back of the. Yeah. You know. Hey, all right. I ended up, you know, my wife is, you know, uh, but no, we didn't ever have it. Cause like I was, uh, I started seeing like, like you see the accidents. Yeah. Like, you, you must see, you must know about all of this stuff. You know, we just kind of drive by and we see one, but we don't know what goes on behind the scenes and yeah. you probably have a better view of it than, than we oh, do. Geez. You know, I mean, like, you know, if you, if you stay in, in Taiwan for long enough, eventually yeah. you have know, somebody who's like, you know, succumbed to an injury or something like that who yeah, died or, you yeah, know, yeah. Got, uh, like life long. And, and uh, there were two people, um, I think around the time that I was thinking about buying one, there were two people in the law firm I was working for way back then 
um, they were like, uh, you know, kind of like Gong Du Shang, you know, he's like a student, graduate students gotcha. um, who wow. were like running around bringing the tea about and doing sure, know, a couple sure, of sure. papers. And like, like an intern of, style guy. Like, yeah. It was really scary because one of them had like, uh, he had this, this, this big bandage on his arm and another one had a bunch of bandages on his head Oof. and they were both had all this yellow stuff seeping out of him. Oof. I didn't realize it was Chinese medicine. Okay. But you could was, smell it. You could I smell thought it. it was pus, you know, and the okay. smell, I was like, well, I don't know that it had leaked that fluid. That's hilarious. That was like cerebrospinal fluid smell or something. Yeah, Body Worlds 2.0. There you go. Yeah. I know. I did. Like, oh, man. Like, you know, please sign the donor form here. Yeah. Because you are like, you know. You're perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Just I what mean, we need. It was like, oh, you'll be a head wound. Um, yeah. It was just like. So I was really I was really scared off from the possibility of doing it. And then in the years since, I mean, there's been a couple of people I've known who've been through horrific accidents. Yeah. And I, and it, like, I never got the. Because as, as someone warned me early on, they said, you know, um, don't you know, do it. Yeah, just like if, if it's you on a scooter, it's it's the meat outside the metal. And if you have a car, it's the metal outside the meat. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So we actually, on that topic, we still we still scooter. But we live about walking, maybe like 15, 12-minute walk from here. So the scooter is like a five-minute a five minute drive. So that's basically what we do. Oh, yeah. But, but it's, but it's uh, even on that little drive, you still have to be like, you need to watch everything because it's just, it's crazy. If you're like hyper, hyper yeah. aware. And I, I have, to, I have admit, to be hyper aware. I love, yeah. I love when I go to like one of those, uh, an island know. or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh God. You know, because I, partly because I'm a crappy scooter driver. I mean, like if the ones here who are good at it are really good. I've got yeah. colleagues who commute every day by scooter and I'm like, whoa. But like when I'm like, I was just out at like Shaliocho Island. I was going to say Shaliocho or um, Green Island or something. Yeah. Um, and Lanyu. And yep. it was like, it is, it feels wonderful and free to like go out and like, ah, it's, you know, yeah. you have a helmet on, but it's like, you're just feeling like, oh, the wind. It's like Tom Cruise in Top Gun, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. you're driving, no helmet. You're just kind of cruising around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh sure. God. Yeah. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's really, it's really cool to like, um, you know, go to those places and then you, you experience this kind of like, or, or even like, like, um, you know, of course, I realize e-bikes are getting faster and faster and stuff. Sure, sure, sure. I actually um, have a, the same. I've definitely seen, you know, a, quite a few accidents. Uh, I, but I've had a, a worse one with a buddy that, uh, like a bicycle. I know most of my friends they do like the bicycle thing, right? Yeah. And I, and I, and I, I would love to do that as well. But one of my good buddies got really into into the bicycling, and then he was kind of doing the mountains and he was doing everything. And then at one time, I guess. He was going, zipping up a mountain and he got knocked off the mountain by a truck. And then I guess somebody found him and he was kind of like out of it. You know, I took him to the hospital. He was OK. Uh, but but something uh, in his brain, some stuff, some stuff disconnected. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, his, his wife was calling us saying, hey, you know, do you want to just chat with him? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we chatted with him and he was just he was really like lethargic and really tired. And he was just, you know, eventually after about six months, he kind of, he, I wouldn't say back to normal, but he was out and about and stuff. And, yeah. and, you know, he remembered all the old stuff, but he was a super hilarious, uh, like a British guy and those British guys, they get uh, super sarcastic. Right. But usually, you know, you build it up. Right. But he was kind of like full blast sarcastic like from the first second after the accident and it was like whoa you just kind of like a slap in the face i'm like all right take it easy you know <laughs> it was it was great to have him back and then eventually uh yeah he eventually uh he took his he took his own life eventually because it was just there was just too much going on and it was just crazy but anyways long story short is i'm, I'm also very scared to do the bicycle stuff because Especially in Tianmu, most of my friends and customers, everybody's biking around and stuff. And they're like, you should get a bike. You should get a bike. And I'm always like, oh, I would love to get a bike, but I'm scared. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm I, super paranoid about like being on the streets with bikes. You yeah. Know, like too. for that part. But that's why I like and I, I have to admit, I haven't really been doing the mountain roads. People consider me a wuss for not doing it. But I'm I like wuss, I'll say it. I like the riverside. And that's like mostly that's different anything. Yeah. And okay. you can travel vast distances across Taipei on the riverside pathways. Okay. And my kids, my kids have done, um, we, we, like I was in the support car, one of the support yeah. cars, you know, like, uh, uh, and my kids were going from, uh, you know, like Yunling, uh, like all the way around towards like uh oh god i mean you were up to hualien and stuff. So, okay so 
those coastal bicycling paths in the mountains and things like that, I mean, it's absolutely amazing and beautiful and, and there's not that many cars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. If you I, go with experienced people, but I, sure. I, I'm kind of a, I have to admit, I'm a bit of a Riverside wimp because I, yeah, I mean, there, there are things I enjoy. I, I mean, I like doing, you know, I, I going like a, it's like an egg beater though. Like you're going up those mountain roads and you've got the, the, uh, the thing so low. So you're getting great exercise. Yeah. But man, it's hard to even stay upright. I can imagine. Yeah. You're, you're like spinning yeah. like crazy. You're like, whoa, you know, like it, it, it's, uh, you know, and I, I realize there's people who absolutely love it and they love going downhills. Sure. Sure. Um, and I'm like, uh, you know, like I'll do riding that. the brakes, you know, yeah, yeah. That's what I would be doing. I would, I would be freaked out. When Taiwan went on like that level three thing, we never got okay. a lockdown, but yeah. like when we had the level three thing, yeah. I could like get to my off. I was to, I'd, to avoid the MRT. Okay. Sure. That to, makes sense. So I started cycling to work and then I, I found it was like, I could get to work on a bike about as fast as I could by taking MRT. Was that, was there less traffic at that time or, or uh, was it not really? Or? It wasn't too bad because like, you know, I, a lot of the route going from, cause I live in like kind of the Shinbeito, Beito area. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So like nice I would, right close to the hot, hot springs, springs though, and stuff. So I would catch like kind of the riverside pathway out there and gotcha. then like zip on down to, um, you know, close to the Lin Antai house. Okay. Pop out from mm -hmm. there over by the botanical garden and then like, you know, come down through the, the city. And there's some places that are sort of marked as bicycle paths, but like, oh, watch out for the pedestrians. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, doing that, like coming and going, we have a few office bikes. And so I like going out at lunch times, you know, sometimes just using bike paths. Sure. They're yeah, the ones marked yeah. out on the sidewalks, but like, you know, just across the section of the city, I can get to like, uh, uh, Shiman Ding or go see some historic sites, take some photographs and, nice. you know, I mean, it's really, it's really nice, but, but like, I know that thing about like, um, you, if you head in head injuries are like a really, a I mean, especially if it changed your friend's personality. I mean, yeah. Big, I was yeah. So I was so, and he was a, still a fantastic, good friend of mine. And yeah, it was just, it was a, it was it was tough. It was tough to see for sure. I mean, he wasn't like a hundred percent different, but he was is definitely yeah. Some, some stuff. Or... I don't know. I yeah. don't. I'm not sure, man. Yeah, but it was bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's rough, that's, man. That's, that's pretty really rough. rough. And I I think um yeah. I mean, like because like especially with the brain, it's like it's where like you know so much of what else? It's can, where your yeah. mind is. It's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, what can you do without it? Not much, right? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, so that's that's pretty rough, man. Yeah. But yeah, bro, that's so you've got some, some crazy stories. What about like some things to watch out for? I know that, uh, there's been a few cases of, you know, F tell tip foreigners, maybe telling someone to F off or flipping the bird and stuff <sighs> like that, that I think that's quite a common thing. And I think as, as a foreigner, that's just kind of like, I think, I don't know the laws very well, but in Canada, yeah, that's just yeah. like, you know, you're just insulting someone, but here. From what I hear and what I've heard, it's you can go to court for that. Like you can right. get sued for that. There's yeah? like, and, and they might change the law. I mean, there's some ideas about trying to change. There's some okay. proposals about trying to change the law, okay. and I don't know how soon that's going to happen. Okay. Given, you know, like there's a brand new president and a brand new legislature. Gotcha. Yeah, congrats um, to them. Yeah, you know, congratulations to, uh, you know, the uh, the democracy wins. Democracy won again, right? Congrats. No, so no matter who you supported, you know, yeah. Taiwan democracy did a good job again. Yes, exactly. Um, smooth yeah. election, you know, good, con you know, uh, you know, good concessions and everything else, and and yeah. uh, uh, honorable victory and everything else. So yeah, um, and a, and an ambiguous result for the legislature. Yeah, that was kind of a surprise, right? You were kind of yeah, yeah. I was just shocked on all all fronts on so this I don't one. Really, think yeah. They're going to pass anything really soon about the public insult law. So gotcha. there's this like it is a classic problem, like. Um, you know, it's even worse than, than like, so there's one thing where somebody will see something and they're like, ah, oh, they, they want to flip off another driver. They want to like, they want to say, you yeah, know, they yeah, want to yeah. drop the F-bomb on the, you know, someone, um, you know, because like some people, they drive really badly. It's a crazy place driving wise, for sure. For sure. And yeah. like, you know, I try not to get angry except for I mean, once every three years. And it's 10. tough. It's tough. But yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, sure. and usually if it's about safety for my kids, I don't want to get exactly. publicly angry. So, yeah. I, you know, no, I it, get it. it's really uncool for a foreigner to get like really like 
Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. So that like, you know, I thought about like, uh, there's, uh, some of the, some of the funnier examples that I've seen over the years is like, um, and we, we've handled a few, but like, okay. Okay. Um, if you use like, um, uh, yeah. can I curse on this? Yeah. Kara, go ahead. No problem. All right. Yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my, my, my kids might hear it. Um, uh, you say <laughs> one of them's right there. I'm oh curious. my God. <laughs> you heard the word before. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is fucking good coffee. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that there. I mean, like, is there any? In, you know, there's no insult intended by that. Exactly. No, you definitely know, not. This is effing good it's coffee. A compliment. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 What the f are you doing? Yeah. What the f are you doing? Yeah. Like, and like, so if, in those situations where somebody might confront someone, and like, you know, there's a, an example where somebody was like, uh, you know, doing some kind of, um work on a on a door like a like a locksmith was doing some work on a guy's sure. door and an yeah. australian guy says um you know well what the f are you doing you know yeah <laughs> hey good eye mate uh, i was i was hoping you would do it in the australian accent for sure. <laughs> yeah 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 you know so um yeah, it's about as good as like um tarantino's <laughs> <laughs> so he's like he there he is like you know like you know, it's just an intensifier. It's just like, it's not yeah. like Fuck you, you know, like I hate yeah. you. I, 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 I know something about you and I'm going to say it out loud for everyone to hear. You yeah. Know. You're no, you're bad at what, you know, you're bad at a lot as a locksmith, you know, you're not good at what you do. You suck. You know, it's not like that. It's just, you know, the person's like, well, it's their expression of surprise. Um, or the other one's like, you know, but when people to a, in a cross culture, cross linguistic, you know, thing, a Chinese speaker in Taiwan who doesn't speak English will know that word. They know that word. They know it's an insult. Yeah, yeah. And so you get a lot of, there's a lot of those cases. There you also see a certain percentage of cases which are raised where they, um, you know, they falsified it. They, they made it up. It's okay. like, yeah, sure. I'm sure that happens a lot. Yeah. There was one, and I think this is a, a pretty strong indictment of the, um, you know, there was, so there was like a, a couple of, you know, professors, uh, you know, teaching at a university in Taiwan. And supposedly um, the foreigner said to the Taiwanese, ethnically Taiwanese professor, um, he said, uh, supposedly, he said, you are the most barbarian of Chinese. Okay. Which, I, like, that doesn't even make sense in English. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a... Yeah, <laughs> that's not even like, I don't think a sentence really anyone would that. use. Yeah, that doesn't make sense it at doesn't, all. Yeah. You know, it sounds like, it, but the the other reason why it's not a public insult is because a public insult has to be made in front of another person. Okay. It can't just be like, you know. It has so to it, be somewhat in public, right? There has to be somebody there. Right. Is what there has you're to be somebody okay. hearing it. Good there has know. to be somebody okay. hearing it. Um, uh, I do know about uh, a case many years ago, uh, a client faced this one. It was like, um, uh, you know, a, a DJ had screwed up in their work performance. They'd like, you know, in the middle of someone's speech, they'd like started throwing in a whole bunch of disco music <laughs> okay. in front of the, uh, you know, okay. ambassador's speech. That's grounds for suing. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> I so mean, yeah. they criticized his work performance. They said, what the bleep were you thinking? Okay. Yeah. And so the guy's like, you publicly insulted me because there was another human being wow. in the world. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay. But like, again, it's an intensifier. It's like, what? Oscar. Yeah, what were you thinking? Yeah, no, that's that's okay. Okay. Why would you do that? Please, you know, like oh, yeah. You know. That's yeah, no, that's that's funny because yeah, I've I've heard that many times that people, you know, they have been sued for for something like that. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, again, coming from a country where people tell each other to f off all the time and it's not a big deal, then yeah, it's 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 surprising, and I didn't really know if it was actually true. So oh, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, think it about is. it. Like, okay. is is f off really like even a a, yep. a true insult? Because mm -hmm. also it could it's a it's a way of saying get out of here, you know, like ah, uh, yeah, you know, it well, could be, you know, in a kidding way. Yeah, it's it's like it's like those old uh, Italian mafia moves. Get the fuck out of here, you know, yeah. like hey, you know, it's like <laughs> forget uh, about it, forget about it, right? So that's crazy. <laughs> that's for that to be deemed an insult and and grounds for suing that's i would be really crazy, happy man. if they did away with that because it's led to a yeah. lot of it's not just it's got taiwan be. people against foreigners it's it's taiwanese against taiwanese people do this kind of crap to each other all the time and they like start up these i i've i've definitely seen a bunch of these things where someone says um so and so in an email criticized my performance within the company and um 
and that was humiliating to me and therefore i'm I'm filing a criminal action under the public insult law. I mean, come on. What? That's, yeah, I think Taiwan is a, re it's a really great place and it's really safe and stuff like that. But I, but I also feel sometimes that's, that's a bit silly. Stuff yeah. like that. That's kind of silly. Yeah. Public yeah. insult laws are used in other places to like, oh, you know, keep Shannon. people down from, Can you, get you know, more? Uh, to keep people down from being able to, to, it's like a, it, it's, it has a chilling exp effect upon um free speech yeah sure of and course of course of course in korea apparently uh public insult laws i have, I have like actually like a, a textbook on this or so at the really? office but yeah oh, wow okay, um okay. about its use in human rights uh context but like apparently in korea if you like say something like oh i think the government's preparations for the olympics uh were inadequate there will be like some jingoistic crazy person who'll go after you for that Oh, wow. Like, oh, you insulted Korea. That's crazy. Public insult of Korea. Oh, man. We also, and you know, South Korea. Not, yeah, even, South not Korea. even That's North, not North Korea. Not even North. Okay. I don't even okay. know what happens to you oh, in North man. Korea. Probably, oh, man. You're not making it out of there. Probably, alive. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? What, what would be the punishment in North Korea? What? They give you food? Yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they might give you food. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, man. We got some more. They're already coming. not giving you food. I mean, they'd have to come up with something. I mean, like, you know. Cheers, man. <laughs> So another one, I have a question. Um, as a, so like as a restaurant owner, sometimes you get, you know, a lot of times you get five star reviews and four star reviews. Sometimes you know three. Once in a while, you'll get like a one star, right? I give you a five. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sometimes you'll get you'll get like you know you'll get a one star, you know, here and there, and, and it's normal, you know, just par for the course, I guess. But I've heard that you some restaurants have sued like people for giving you know oh. on a sort of a slander law is that a thing or yeah because they're yeah. like, like oh, slander my thing couldn't have been too salty you know like and, and it's like okay, okay. That, there was like a whole thing the person's review was about like you know that they felt the dish was too i guess too salty or something okay yeah and like they gave um but i think you know oh god i mean it's the internet so you like you know you of have to course. take shoot come on man i get i get bad reviews yeah. you know we get we get we get all that stuff like no you know, is what so the is. thing is this is that I would I would know from like uh, like 15 years of, of coming to your restaurants so is like, uh, you know, that it, it's basically there's no like you've been so economy accommodating. Yeah. And, okay, well, and the fact it. is that like, oh, the other thing, too, is is your restaurant's busy. So as a result of that, um, you know, the you know, sometimes you got to wait because. Right. Yeah. You got to yeah. wait. So yeah. like, you know, throwing a hissy about like mm, this arrived late or this or that or, you know um why why complain about that i think i don't know my my theory on the the one star reviews is, i mean the, whoever that is is they're probably just not a happy person you know like no because like we have like, like i said we we mostly get decent reviews uh but yeah sometimes we'll get one star reviews and i and i'm not asking because i ever care enough to Something press charges it kind of which is a, ridiculous it, it's like a streisand effect it's ridiculous yeah so, like yeah. There, there's a famous thing about like you know the the the, like, Stry Barbara Streisand didn't want anybody taking pictures of her house, and so she okay. got a court order to, like to bar anyone from like publishing any pictures of her house. But the problem is that like now everyone who can take pictures, who's not beholden to like the court order or whatever that she sought, will now now people are curious. What is it about it? Like yeah, what's she hiding? What's she yeah? Because yeah, I mean, uh, that's the first time I would ever care. If, uh, yeah, I would even. I mean, Look, what is the swimming who cares? Pool in the shape of an ex lover? I mean, I don't like, know. Who cares, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, but what? yeah, now when when it's it's like the typical, you know, like you have kids and you, you tell them not to do something, then they're kind of be like, ooh, why can't I do that? Maybe maybe there's something there. Don't that, go into that, this yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, it's like don't eat this chocolate. It's, it's like, like you know, the, then like after after yeah. six months of never being allowed into a certain closed off room in the house, they discover it's like daddy's napping room. Yeah, it's it's just, exactly <laughs> that's hilarious. It's like. Uh, so yeah, some of those some of those laws, the, the 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 drinking and driving and the kind of like defamation stuff. That's it's it, that's kind of crazy how, how it works out here. Very different from Canada or U.S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I think the, uh, it's also really important. I mean, like you know, new into the time that I got here. I mean, yeah, uh, like I I also realized human life is not worth that much. Um, so if I get hit by a car or something, you're a pedestrian. I know that there's an effort to try to protect pedestrian Understand. rights. Yeah. This is a new thing in Taiwan. New. The crosswalk thing is new. Crosswalks. Yeah. They're trying to like, you know, protect people in crosswalks, but still don't, you know, like 
Ugh, you know, like, but still look both ways before you cross the street. Yeah, yeah be really careful because there's a lot yeah. of people who really don't give a damn uh, about it. Like, especially the blue trucks. You know, oh, it's yeah. like the little blue trucks that go around delivering everything at like double and speed. I, and I think a lot of the the like like not to you know to piss on or anything, but a lot you know like the drivers, Uber drivers, and stuff like that. I mean. The faster they get somewhere, you know, they can take their next gig and they get paid more, and that's understandable. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you know you're on the scooter and it's just like zoom, and I'm totally used to being cut off, and I'm I'm 100 okay with being cut off like multiple times a day. But uh, the worst is when you know you get cut off, and then the person who cut you off just like slows right down, like and then starts looking at you know turnips on the side of the road or something, and you're like, hey did you really have to do that? Like, take it easy. You know, it's funny. It's funny. And I didn't, I didn't say, well, I didn't think that I said very much until one time I had my daughter on and she obviously was like, uh, what did she say? She was five. So I picture this it's a little Taiwanese little girl, five years old. And you know, we get cut off and she's like, yeah, learn to drive buddy. She <laughs> screams that out. And I'm like, Oh, well, I should, I think I should watch my mouth a little more around. Cause I mean, it's not like she learned that elsewhere. That's a hundred percent, you know, from me, I'm, I'm guessing. Right. Cause my wife doesn't say that. And, and I was like, oof, yeah. Tough one now. Oh, I remember like one, yeah. one time I was like, I was like 15 or something like that. I was, I was, you know, I grew up in, in Long Island, New York. And my, you know, one of my neighbors, um, ran into me at the, um, uh, uh, he was a really nice guy, but he was like 80 years old or something like that. And gotcha. He was um, uh, he was at the library and he offered me a ride home from the far end of town to like the part of town where the, the street where where we all lived. Yeah. Great. And, you know, really nice guy. But like, you know, at some point I'm just like looking through the books that I'd gotten at the library and suddenly he just shouts, oh, don't you throw up my asshole, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, Bleh! is he talking to me? Like, yeah. uh, and he's like, oh, oh, oh I, I, I talking to that other driver there yeah he just kind of snapped right he and, snapped. and then he kind of came back into his world and he's like oh oh i had a passenger like, yeah, you know, it was like funny. 15 or something that's know? so funny man yeah that that's uh that's crazy but uh another one one other topic i quickly want to talk about is you were talking about mentioning uh fraud yeah and fraud's a big thing and uh elder fraud was something we we, we brought up earlier and when we were chatting well which is something i've never even heard i've never even heard the term before but uh being here for a long a long enough time i could see something like that maybe you could talk a little bit about something like that yeah oh my god yeah, so like yeah. you know it's really hard to undo once someone starts digging their like talons into a relative and everybody's got yeah. like a you know the, sure. the black sheep uncle who like goes and grabs the, the oh, like sure. the the patriarchs um you know, chop stamp. Well, a chop, that's a thing, right? And like yeah. falsifies a bunch of stuff. Ooh, the, the family's big apartment or house has been turned over to me, the guy that everyone hated forever. That's you know? a very, very common story. I mean, it's for those like, who yeah, don't every know. family's yeah. got that low key sure, sure, like sure. character course, who's course. like always pulling some kind of crap. Yeah. But like there's some real professionals out there. And once they get there, I'll give an example. There was a guy, uh, you know, he had, uh, I would say like, you know, roughly like you know 200 million us dollars that basically disappeared because uh Ooh, some some fraudsters money. not his family members but fraudsters just got their you know their fingers into into him it's okay. taiwanese okay okay uh taiwanese and he had a lot of property in taiwan uh he was living in the united states uh, his family you know got uh, estranged from him and I, I, for, for a couple of years, like we worked on this matter, um, trying to claw back as much property as we possibly could. And it was really hard. Uh, cause, but there was massive fraud wow. involved with this. Cause the people that got in there, they were like, oh, he's constructing these, um, these facilities, he's constructing a warehouse complex, he's constructing, uh, but he paid for each one of those things, millions of dollars, like cash over and over oh, and oh. over. And they got all these promissory notes, all these Ben Piao. And they brought those Ben Piao to Taiwan. They got them notarized and legalized um, through the Los Angeles Teco office. Uh, okay. you know, I, I guess the notary there was just totally down with this. Got and his cut somehow, probably. The definition, yeah. the definition of like being, like, um, you know, uh, not able to handle your own affairs. And, you know, to be like where you'd get assigned uh, like a guardian, uh, like, yeah. uh, uh, like that kind of stuff in Taiwan, you basically have to be practically like starving to death okay, or like unable to put on clothes. 
Okay. You have to like have some sort of outward. But if you if you actually kind of present fairly well and you like you know you eat meals and you dress okay, okay, and you're not like you know you're not crapping yourself or you're not like have some kind of obvious medical problems. Sure. From, but like, you know, the system here is not so well equipped for recognizing that there are certain people when they reach a certain age they will sign anything put in front of them. Yeah, of course, of course, especially if it's if it's. Unfortunately, if it's your family member, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Or like friends, you know, and that's what happened with this guy. It's like, quote unquote, friends. Oh, we took him oh. for an outing. We gave him companionship. We hung out. We took him to the Hoover <sighs> Dam. We took him, um, you know, to see a show. We took him to like, you know, and like they kind of made it, but they also like took hundreds of millions of dollars from him. And that's awful. So in yeah. this case, in this situation, like they, it was all because like there'd been a bit of a spat. And we assumed for a long time that this was some sort of some sort of elder dementia that he was suffering from. Okay. Okay. The weird thing is this is that at the very kind of towards the end of the case, we found out that actually his entire life he had probably had an IQ of well below seventy. So actually, this is a little bit almost like Chance the Gardener from uh, being there, the Peter Sellers movie. Like it's a little bit. Of, gotcha. This yeah. guy somehow managed to inherit like hundreds of millions of dollars. He had a wife. He had children. He had, like okay. got into his older age. Um, and I'm just glad, I'm actually really super glad that they were able to claw back just enough for him, um, you know, to be able, he will have a comfortable life for the rest of his life. Okay, good. good he couldn't good. get everything back. Yeah. Uh, there's some fraudsters That's crazy. out of this who now have vast amounts of Taoyuan County, I guess. Land. Um, okay. Housing. Wow. Uh, but like, yeah, they, 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 like, they really, they, cause what happened was this is they took those kind of notarized and legalized documents out of the TECO office and they used those to file claims. And once those claims went through the court system here, um, they, he, he didn't really know to defend himself against all these actions they were filing here to enforce the permissory note. like the advantage of, of it being quick. They were and just they like just, bang, bang, bang. They grabbed it. And once the, once the inability of Taiwan's legal system to reopen situations where there's been like a really blatant fraud Okay. You know, their inability yeah. to go back and say, whoa, 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 I know that this was treated. They used the, they abused the use of the court system to steal this person's everything. Okay. That's tough. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. That's a tough one, dude. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody yeah. like worries yeah. about that. You've got elderly relatives. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, my, my, my father's passed. My mom's in her 80s. Uh, you know, everybody worries about this. The idea that, you know, people will call up. And my mom definitely gets phone calls from scamsters. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's hard. Well, that's what some people do as as almost like a, like a profession, right? Like that's their job is is just trying to scam, right? Like just scammers. They're just. I mean, I get. I even get phone calls that that my phone says, "Oh, spam callers." Spam yeah. Call. Sometimes I'll pick it up. I'll be like, "Hello," and they're like, "Hey, brother." I'm like, "No, no, no," and I'll just hang up. But yeah, it's it's most of the time I, I just don't even pick it up. But yeah, I mean, they hang up on me a lot too. Yeah, yeah. You know, basically, <laughs> as soon as they hear I'm a foreigner, you know. Oh yeah, they're like, ah, oh, this guy. Forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Forget about it. Yeah. Forget about it. Forget about it. Uh, yeah. One more thing, man. So you, if as maybe some advice to maybe new foreigners to that are coming to Taiwan, what's some kind of advice that you would give? You know, like you've been here for 23 years. Uh, some kind of advice you would give for people that that kind of want to come out here and maybe build a life out here. Yeah, this is like some, no, this what, is one of the done. safest places uh, in Asia. You know, I mean, uh, aside from whatever they say about like you know <laughs> the imminent Chinese China, attack or something like yeah. oh, China. Yeah. That's question number one when I go back. Yeah. Oh yeah, but like you know, the the, the truth is that like Taiwan, like on the streets. Um, Taiwan is one of the safest places in the world, like just out and about. And Great. despite everything we just said about like scooter accidents, Ooh, yeah, bicycle sure. accidents, yeah. but the uh, Taiwan is actually like, you know, there are no street level scams. There's nobody who's like out there to mess no, with you. No, no low level stuff. Right. Yeah. No, like, oh, my cousin has like a diamond shop and, you know, oh, he's got a special going on today or like, oh, the, you know, like there's no um, kind of tuck, tuck driver level nonsense, no yeah. pedicab craziness, none of that, you know? So from a standpoint of like Taiwan and then like in terms of the goodwill and the, you know, a lot of families, like everyone's yeah. got a relative living somewhere else. It's Vancouver or LA or New York. <laughs> oh, <laughs> usually yeah. it's all Vancouver. It's all usually it's like, Oh, Vancouver, Vancouver. Yeah. To me anyway, Canada, old oh, Vancouver, Vancouver. And there's like a yeah. real passion. I mean, like, you know, yeah. when, you, when you talk to people, like, you know, you see these people, uh, for example, like, um, 
you know, is, there'll be someone who does pottery and like, and it's like, they don't just do pottery. They do pottery where it doesn't even look like it's made out of clay. Like they've done pottery. So it looks like it's made out of wood. They make mm -hmm. pottery. So it looks like it's made out of steel. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, what the, you know, but they're like, oh yeah, no, this is my biggest passion. Like photography, like, you know, yeah. there's a lot of really great, you know, the Inga Pottery Museum oh, or, you know, the National Center for Photogra Photographic in uh, uh, Images over by very close to uh, the Xinguang Tower. Okay. Uh, by okay. Taipei Main Station. Uh, one, so, or sorry, the Main Station area. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's a lot of people who like very clearly have like a massive passion. Yeah. For like what they do, and and it's kind of like you see a little, uh, like you see quite a bit of that in Japan too. Okay, sure. Like sure. that kind of like fanatical, like you know, you'll see like four guys all with their massive like telephoto lenses aimed at a at a peach blossom or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And you're just like. Oh, you know, yeah. and they're like shooting on film. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So there's something really yeah. cool about. Um, I think you know Taiwan has a lot of people with passion. Gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah. Agreed, and, agreed. and that counteracts like the number of people who have a chabudo, you know, the chabudo, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Chabudo, yeah, yeah, eh, yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. I didn't quite, you know, the electricians who don't wire things correctly, or the people that like, you know, but like there, there are people who are just like really obsessive with like, no, the right way to do to make tea is this. And, oh yeah, you know. tea is massive. Yeah, true, true. Okay. So okay. my advice, like, is is jump in and embrace it, like, um, you know, get out and stretch yourself. Uh, check out some of the different things. Um, and then like public transport is, is amazing. Is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and even if it, it's kind of like leads you to a, like take high speed rail down to Tainan and then, you know, to go visit some of the things out and about where it's hard to take public transport, get a car, rent yeah. a car down there. Sure. Rent, rent a scooter. I, I rent or whatever. They're so, so easy to get all that stuff. Down so there. easy. Yeah. Um, cheap. And then like, you yeah. know, and then, uh, you know, really take advantage of this place because, you know, there's there, I know that like, for example, for the American diplomats, uh, with AIT, that there's guys who are like, they're on their third or fourth time getting stationed back to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They love it. Yeah. 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 And like, I remember one of these guys went to like Iraq to the green zone. Like, yeah. Um, I, I know a couple of people who went specifically to Iraq in the middle of the worst possible time <laughs> because a year there in like you know in a hardship posting like that would get them would allow them to have a chance to move their family back again back to here. taiwan wow okay yeah i mean it's i have to agree i think it's a great place i think uh when people want to come to asia i think that taiwan is a great place to start and it's also great a great place to stay i i started here my plan was to come here for maybe a couple of years and then maybe try different countries and then when it came to, you know, it's the end of the year or the second year, or the third year, I thought, oh, this place is great. I have no, no reason or intention to go somewhere else because I was having a great time. And, and yeah, you know, I, I love it going to be here this long. I love it here. I've I been do. here for 20 years, 20 years. Yeah. You said you're See, 23. That's the thing. I mean, so, like, you know, man, yes. cheers, to cheers, cheers, cheers to Taiwan. Yes. Yeah. This but is the place, man. I love it. It's free. It's democratic. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I, I really do treasure the fact that, you know, and, and it's not just, I'm not just saying this because I'm a misty eye because of an election. It was just, oh, okay. uh, you know, it's really, it was really cool because, uh, you know, you read the newspapers in, when I was in mainland China, you know, like all the newspapers were basically like international news is shit and like local news is is awesome. Our Everything domestic deal. is awesome. Yeah. And like Taiwan is like just this, I mean, the newspapers are crazy, but True. it's a bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, I like the fights and the legislators. Those, <laughs> those, are, always so those are funny. The first time I saw that, I was like, Oh my God, she threw her shoe at him. What's going on? Cause the Canadian one is kind of like law number one. We want to, and they just kind of like super monotone, like, brrr. and then here people are punching each other and you're like, Whoa, Oh, because so they're like, wow. That guy, was, so the, that guy was like, he was accused. Like some <laughs> legislator called him, she called him a gangster. Okay. And so he went and beat the crap out of her on the legislative so end floor. And he's like, like, I'm what? not a gangster. Bam, How dare you? Bam, bam, bam. I'm not a gangster. You know, yeah, like, it's like, crazy. What the, 
I was like, oh, this is you're, crazy. You're like, you're killing your case here, man. Yeah, yeah that's funny. I would uh, never hit a woman. Boom, oh, boom, boom. Yeah. Now that like that that's did take crazy. me to something really weird. Yeah. Uh, I was riding on the MRT once, and I think that honestly, the uh, MRT culture every year gets more polite and better because I oh, see yeah. like people jumping up to. When my wife was pregnant with twins, nobody would give her a seat. Five yeah. years later, she was pregnant with our eleven-year-old, or now eleven-year-old. Wow. Um, and she was, she was. People jumped up to give her seats five years made such a change but there was one time i was commuting home and i got on the train and like you know it was it was rush hour and the yeah. train was absolutely packed and some people had kind of pulled that trick of like the car is actually not even close to full yeah 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 but they like they've uh, they stepped on board the car and they were like my job's done yeah, yeah, and like they just stop at the door. They yeah, stopped no. at the door, yeah, and yeah. I kind of like I kind of bumped into someone who like I guess maybe done that or something like that. I bumped into him. I bumped into him. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't shove him. I, I, yeah, I accidentally bumped into him. Yeah. So he responded as when the train started. He shoved me, gave me oh, a full on shove. Okay. And then he he like goes and he gets like really like you know he goes, um, Taiwan people don't push, and I and I and I turned around and I like now we're like you know we're like you know, face to face, like, what are we going to kiss or something? Like, we're yeah. that close. And I'm, because okay, okay. it's rush hour. And I just look at him and I go, what, what do you really want to do here? Yeah. And I, I said, like, look, now, I know you just said that, you know, Taiwan people don't push, but literally, that's you just, just exactly <laughs> just pushed me. And I bumped into you, and I'm heartily sorry for that. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah. for that, but you, you pushed me. Um and I, I went, I kind of, I talked to them. I told them all the things I just told you about, like, yeah. you know, how the, you know, the quality of like, uh, you know, like Jay and uh, Wen Hua, you know, the kind of, mm -hmm. uh, the culture of riding on an MRT, MRT on the, uh, has gotten better every single year and how people were always more polite. And it's so rare and something to treasure that in this city, people actually get more polite with time. True. Yeah. yeah. You don't see that. Like in other cities, they're like, oh, you know, uh, everything's gone to shit since the 1950s. But like here, yeah. people are like, get nicer with time agree and i i was like you know i gave him this like thing where i was like i really appreciate like how how nice people are getting yeah and uh and then at the end of it like after we like talked for a little while we ended up like shaking hands and of course yeah. i got off at a different subway stop than i normally get off because i didn't want yeah. him to get all call his 20 friends and have yeah my you don't want yeah you want to kind of yeah yeah i don't want him agree. to know where i live but exactly. like but i was willing to shake hands and like you know kind of let things go as friends you could just shake and you go on your way. Beautiful. Yeah, man. Beautiful. Speaking of that, dude, like uh, we're, I think we're a little, we're a little bit over time because we can talk and talk and talk, but I had a great time. Uh, I didn't even get to half the questions that, <laughs> that I have here, but uh, that means uh, we can do it again sometime. I appreciate Absolutely. you It'd coming out, man. We're like uh, uncovered yeah. territory and like, you know, yeah. um, you know, it, it's always fun to talk with you and, and uh, you know, it's really great to have a chance to like, you know, to do it in this format. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming here. I appreciate Thanks it. Me, man. Thanks for coming. And thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. And I always get the question like, oh, do you know a lawyer? Do you know a lawyer? Do you know a lawyer? This is him. All right. This is the guy that I know. So. <laughs> I don't know how many people I should be sending your way, but uh, we'll talk about that after. Now is I'm a good get time for me to try the world's hottest wings. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you fed, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right.